Guitar and Excel, hallelujah. Position one, fret number five. Get ready and some coffee. Get ready, it's karate time. But don't drink it yet because it's too hot. Drink it. I don't want it. I said, drink it. How dare you? I called you both in because I hear you've been having problems. No, how dare you? Important, we She's the one who started. How? How? Not need dare how? How dare you? How dare you? How dare No, how, how dare you dare me how? You're fired. You can't fire me. Oh, I see what you're doing now, how? Playing word games like some woke progressive. Did we? Oh, I'm so sorry. Didn't well, I'm not falling for it, man. Huh? What? I'm not falling for it. I'm not falling for it, how? We aren't giving you anything. Get out. The, you know, the... These progressive word games make deals and contracts with progressives impossible because they keep changing the definition of words after the deal is done, dude. This is done, man. I mean, it's, it's like trying to settle on an arranged marriage contract only to find out after the fact they changed the definition of marriage, woman, and even arranged. I am altering the deal. I mean, every dang word's definition in the entire contract has been altered post arrangement. Nice. That that that's not a contract; it's a con trick. Order, order. Witness may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I thought I thought we agreed on the pretty one for for my seven years of labor. Well, it's tradition in these parts to first marry off the oldest male. Yeah. These lies will not stand. Minds, this will not stand. You know, this aggression will not stand, man. Honestly, yeah, like even the definition of the dollar itself is being changed, you know? I mean, you settle on the price, and then they change the definition of a dollar post-contract. I am altering the deal. Yes, well, we have agreed to pay you $100. However, the new definition of a dollar is that it now has the purchasing power to acquire precisely... Half a peanut. Let me get one. One on a rib. No, 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 no. One rib. With a slight caveat that in order to get the half peanut for a dollar, you have to win a wrestling match against an angry elephant on steroids. Huh? Oh, twenty dollars. I wanted a peanut. But don't worry. The the de the definition of the dollar changing thing. It's all. It's only transitory. By which we mean. We changed the image on the dollar bill from George Washington to trans Georgita Washington in order to, you know, add some femininity to the founding fathers. Because that's, that's the important thing, not their ideas or anything. And uh, it's also more historically accurate, according to the Netflix documentary. Beauty is transitory, Doctor. Yeah, appar apparently... According to the documentary, George Washington had a homoerotic affair with Alexander the Great. You know, obviously the homoerotic thing was totally to be expected given documentaries these days. But it was a little scandalizing, however, considering Alexander the Great was a rotting corpse at the time. You know, I mean, bold, brave, inspiring, groundbreaking documentary. But, but you know how our Georgita Washington was. Always pushing the boundaries with their pelvis. Anyways, uh, Georgita Washington is now being depicted on the dollar bill with suspiciously cherry-colored red hair and lips. The caption on the new dollar bill and Georgita's new catchphrase being, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Demonstrating that young Georgita Washington may not have cut down the entire cherry tree, but cherries... We're certainly cut. I cannot tell a lie. This is a great deal. Oh. Uh, that, that, that's not how I was told the story, you know, but, but whatever. Like, who needs Honest George? Would we now have Honest Joe? I mean, the only difference is the changing definition of honest. I'd, I'd tell you what the new definition of honest was, but seeing how definitions change almost as rapidly as the decline in the dollar... It's not really worth our time. You know, and, and young George, I mean, Georgita Washington's cherries, 
contrary to what some people say, were actually cut down and eaten by cannibals. And he deserved it, by George. It was an ancient and honored cannibal Indian tribe known as the Warrens. Ooh, and now I'm thinking in stereotypes. Chopped George's cherries right off and ate them. Must be the war cry of her tribe. Starting America's most cherished founding principle. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and cannibalism. And, uh, and if, anybody, if anybody wants to debate those historical facts with me, I say... Well, make my day, pal. Uh, little help here. What are you doing out of bed at this hour? Go back to bed, Joey. No! I want to I wanna mop the floor with that dog-faced pony soldier. You can't mop the floor with anything. You don't clean messes, Joey. You only make messes. Everyone knows this. And then some other fool like me is the one who has to mop up your mess. Go back to bed. I'll hear no more of this. Okay, okay. I'm willing... I'm willing to negotiate on your terms in exchange for going back to bed. And I'll even throw in pulling foreign aid from our American allies. I demand chocolate chip ice cream and a waffle cone. And the waffle cone is non-negotiable. How dare you? Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to practice with. We're continuing on with our project, mapping out the notes in the C major scale and related modes to the fretboard with the help and use and application of a song. That song, of course, being Hallelujah. Our objective being to be able to play the song in open position as it is normally played. The song, of course, being in the key of C, although we can think about it as basically going from mode to mode, the key of C to the key of A minor, back to the key of C, which we will discuss. We do have one chord that is outside the key of C chord constructions, which we have discussed and will discuss again here as well. But generally, it's in the key of C. Generally, we think of playing it with chords uh, in open position. Once we understand a fairly simple song construction or a melody, however, it's useful to then think about how we can play it in multiple positions, which is how this fits into basically our project to learning the entire fretboard rather than just uh, the song in open position. That allows us to play it in open position, but it also allows us to improvise in other areas along the, the guitar, making the, the similar tune sound a little bit different, make it a little bit more creative, giving us some structure to play with something that is familiar while also expanding on it and doing something different, playing with a range and saying, hey, look, I wanna play something that sounds like hallelujah, but I also wanna expand on it and be creative within basically that range in a similar fashion as we might do if we were to paint something or draw something and say, I want it to look like this particular thing, but possibly put my own stylistic impression in it as well. So in a prior presentation, we discussed how to play it basically in open position. We went over some of uh, the lyrics and the chords this way. So we have it laid out over here where we tried to put the uh, intro and then the verse one. And then we have the chord changes basically when uh, the singing changes happened. We have the chorus, we have verse two, chorus, verse three. Now remember that uh, Cohen had different verse constructions so you might hear different verse constructions. You might hear these, all these verses, however, are basically interchangeable with regards to the playing of the guitar. So whatever version of the song you like best, you can swap out the verses are basically interchangeable within it once you, once you know the tune. I tend to be hearing the Shrek version in my mind most of the time, which again, you can find by just searching on like YouTube or something. And if you want to practice along playing with that to stay in tempo, that is a fun thing to do. Uh, and so I would recommend that. And then we also mapped out all of the chords over here. So last time we were looking at the chords basically in open position. Now I have mapped out all of the chords in both open position and position, what I would call position one which you can also call the G-shaped position, which is probably the most common position for people other than open position. 
So oftentimes people learn the position up here, uh, in what, which I would call position one. So it goes, I'm, and as we map these out on the fretboard, let me explain my mapping out on the fretboard the theory. We have the fretboard here. This is frets uh, zero through 12. And I have the E here is the low string, which I'm gonna say the low string is on top, which is backwards from other tab, but I think it's actually the easiest way to see it. So that's the low or heavy E string, the one closest to the ceiling. We then mapped out on the bottom of the fretboard, you can imagine everything that has colors in it is a note that is in the key of C or related modes. However, you wanna look at it, it's gonna be these notes here, all the ones that don't have sharps and flats because we're in the key of C. We then mapped on top of that, the notes that are in the pentatonic, the five out of seven notes. So the green lays on top of the blue. And then on top of the green, we mapped out the chord construction for the root of the song, which is the key of C. Now, of course, you can, you can think of a switching from the key of C, you know, as we switch chords to an F or an A minor or so on. A minor is the same, but the, you know, a G, you could switch the whole mapping of the fretboard but instead of us thinking of it like that we're going to be thinking of it as relation to the key of c everything is the fretboards mapped out into the key of c everything fits into the key of c in the song except when we go to this e here which you would think would be an e minor and we discussed that a little bit before we might touch on that in a second here so that's the idea and then we have it mapped out in open position, which I would call position four or the C position. So there's a C in the song. Here's the fingering of it, which is mapped out in blue here. That's where our fingers would go. This is the root. This is uh, the third. Here's another root. And then here's the fifth. And these are open because it's in the nut. And then if we were to map this out, however, in the middle of the guitar up here, then we have this basically G shape this is a G-shaped C. Why? Because if I did this G-shape, here's a G-shape here, and that would be a G. But if I move that same fingering up here, I would have, I'd be grabbing a C. So that's why it would be a G-shaped C major. But we can't really play it like that because I need to bar off these three. So you could play just these two notes up top, or we could refinger it like this. Not the most comfortable fingering. That would be this, this, and this but not too bad once you get used to it. You can also finger just these three notes, this, this, and this. You might see that as an A-shaped. It would be an A-shape if it was leaning back. That would be an A-shaped uh, C major. But uh, if we lean it forward, it's actually part of the G-shape. And you can see it more clearly if you reach forward to that pinky because that's the bottom part of the G when you usually play it like that. So now you've got the bottom part of the G down here so then and then so that's going to be the that general uh shape that we're going to be trying to play up in this part of uh, the guitar then there is an a minor in in the song so the a minor shape then in open position looks like this which is now mapped out in blue fingers here here and here and then the open a is rung out and then the e is rung out if I move that up to fret five in what I would call the, you know, the G-shape position or position one, then we've got our bar chord. And we can call this, an, this is an E minor shaped bar chord because an E minor could be played like this or like this or like this. But if I move that up here, I'd have to bar this off. Sometimes you, it's useful to reinforce your fingers here. And also if it's a bar chord, you don't, I wouldn't put this finger down first, like you might want to put these fingers down first and then use ho however much meat you need hanging off the top of the guitar is fine and then put this on top of it right there, right? Instead of trying to grab it like this with the pointer of your finger and then trying to bar off. So you want to grab here and then lay down these fingers so that you, you, can, you can lay down as much meat on top of the fingers as you need. But you might not need the full bar chord there because you can also play that like this. I can play this, this, and this, grabbing the C down here. So I can grab it this way. That's quite useful because this C is the third. And if I grab it this way, that third is often what doesn't get rung out because it's in the arch of my knuckle. And so if I wanna get that third to ring out, it's not nice to play it this way. I can also play it this way. I can play just these three boom 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 
but that's inverted. And now the A's on the bottom. So notice the first, now I've changed it here. So the first is, is the A is the, is the one, it's the same notes on the fretboard, but now, uh, but now the first is green related to the A minor and then the third and then the fifth. So we can play it this way. Uh, and you also have it played up this way. Most people don't kind of do it this way. This would here, here, here. It's inverted again uh, that way. You could do that, but but again, possibly no, people don't play it as much because it's on the low end of the guitars. And a lot of people when they're, well, in any case, and it also has the A kind of on the bottom. So it's inverted uh, that way. All right. And then we also have a d -d 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 an F in our song. So we have an F in open position. It would be a bar chord, which would be like this, which is an, an E-shaped bar chord. That's just normal open position. F is a bar chord because it's basically, uh, it always is a bar chord, right? I could play it this way, boom, 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 in open position. I can also play it this way, moving this finger down to here, which is much more comfortable and what I would typically do unless I want to get that heavy E in there and really, I mean, F in there and emphasize that F. So I play it this way and mute the top string. If I played it up here, then if we move that F into position number one, you can see I, here's my F. Now, if I play that like this, I have my C shape, this here, here, here. Now that's a bit of a tricky shape because that if I play just those two strings, I can't get these two if I play it like a normal C. Here's a C shape down here in the key of C. If I move that up here, then, then now I have a C shaped F major, but I, have to, I can mute this string and I can mute this string and I can play that fine. And I do that all the time. But some people, well, you can't do that because you're missing the fifth, right? But it works quite fine, so you can totally do that. And you get a very strong because you have the, the, the root and you've got the third. But you can also, if you wanted to switch your pinky here, you can play it this way. So now you've got the root, the third, and the fifth, a little bit harder to reach. And then you could put your finger down here and pick up another F. So that's a useful way to see it. And then you can also, you can also play it this way. And this is quite common. Many people play boom, boom, boom. And that's inverted. Uh, so the F isn't the lowest one, but it's pretty easy to play. And so that's the same thing, just not putting your pinky down. So, and then you could put your pinky down and grab that last bit. So then, so then you also have the F down here. So boom, boom, boom. Now this looks like a D shape to most people because if I was to lean it back, it would be this D shape. We're used to seeing a D shape up here. But if you lean it forward, it's part of this C shape, right? So, th so that's gonna be that one. And then next, next we also have a G shape. All right, so a G shape in open position, a G, not a G shape, a G, <laughs> looks like this G shape in open position, fingers here, 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 here are open. And then I put my finger down here. You can play it different ways if you wanted to play the G like this, but I play it the normal way like that. And then if I move that shape up to this position or I play a G in this position, I have this note right here, this G right here. If I lean forward, then I play this, we call this a D shaped, or you could call it a D shaped uh, G major. Why? Because it has this D shape same thing we saw up stop on the on the G, but now we're leaning back. So for me, it's difficult to get like my pinky here and lean back and get this one. So what I do is I, I reach to my G like this, this finger, this finger, this finger, and play it that way. And you can either not play out this E, but if you play that E with the bar, then it's not, it's still in our, it's in our, chord construction so that's not bad and you can play it this way like this and then also just realize that you also have this big G right here so this is we saw that this was the F if you move that F here's the G but if you move that F up to here you have the G that you can play like this and you can also play it like this so that's quite common 
and very useful to, to use in this song as well. And then we have the funny one, and that's going to be the E major. The reason it's funny is because you would think it would be an E minor considering we're in the key of C. But the idea here is that we're going to throw in a major, which will help us lead back into uh, the A minor. So if we see this in open position, then we're going to be fingering this one, this one, and then grabbing this one. That's the one that's going to be out of our key of C. So we're going to grab that here, and then this is open, open, open. Now, if we moved that then into our first position or the G-shaped position related to the key of C, then we would say, okay, I can play it this way, which is basically our C shape again. So we have this C shape. This one is outside of our key. That's why it's in white here. And then if I grab this E, that's the C shape. Boom here that I'm moving up to here. I could mute this string if I wanted to, uh, to play that. And again, fine. It's fine to play that. I do it all the time. But, but uh, we're missing the fifth. So if we wanted to pick up the fifth, we can go boom, boom, boom. And so now it's going to be uh, here, here, and here. So that's going to be uh, picking up the fifth. That's a little bit of a reach to do. So again, you could play it like this way. A lot of people will pick up this, this, and this without the pinky. Same thing without the pinky and then you can lay down the pinky if you want. So you could play it like this way with no pinky, and then as you're waiting to get that pinky down. You also have that uh, D shape down here. So we have this D shape down here. And then also, uh, I should have pointed this out before, you have this shape up top, which is just these three. Boom, boom, boom. So you could, you know, play that this way. You can also, uh, you can also grab like this way and pick up, this was the C, and then I can grab it like this, uh, that way so I can pick up the fifth above it uh, like that as well. Now this is useful because sometimes the, the E minor would fit in here, so oftentimes I will change from like an, an E minor to the E major, I'll finger it like this, the minor would be here, that's what the minor would be, right, boom, boom, boom. So I could put my fingers like this, and then I can convert it to the major. And I convert it to the major by switching this finger to this. And I like I like doing that. And I and I often put my finger instead of down here on the E on this C, which is a little which gives a little bit more tension. That's going to be the 13. So it gives that tensiony field. And then that's going to resolve back to this A minor like it does here. So here's our E and then that resolves to the A minor. So if we played through this in, in open position, which I'll just go quickly because we saw before, right? If we were to say, okay, if I was to play the chords over here, we'd start with a C and you have to get the strumming pattern down. So you might start with just the down strokes. And then we're going to go into this to the F, U. I'm gonna scroll down a bit so I can see it if I have my guitar on the screen below. You don't really care for music, do you? And then dun, well, it goes like this. The fourth, there's my F, the fifth, which I often shift this way to this G, or you can go to this G, fifth, or you can play it uh, the G like this, and you can play the F like this, fourth to fifth, uh, care for music, do you, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, and then the minor fall, the major lift, which again, I usually play like this to that F, you can play it like this if you want, and the baffle king, which I usually move up to here, or you can play it like this, moving up to here or you can move up to here to get to get to that G the baffle King uh, composing so this is where I don't put the a minor or the E minor you could switch from the E minor composing 
and then add the major, right? Composing, that's in the key, and that's that pull. Hallelujah. So now it kind of sounds like we're in the key of A minor now, and now we're going to play the chorus, which kind of gets us back to the key of C from kind of being in the related minor mode of A minor, Aeolian mode, right? So we go, Hallelujah. So that's the key of F. You could play it this way. Hallelujah. Back to the A minor. And then Hallelujah, which you can play this way if you want. Hallelujah. We're going to that C. And now it's going to go to the G. Ooh. You can play it this way. You can play it this way. You can play it this way. And then, yeah. And then, dun, 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 dun. and then it's going to start over again. All the verses are going to be, you know, interchangeable that we'll see here. So I won't go through the whole thing because we saw it uh, before. Now the idea is, okay, how can I convert that to basically playing it in this position? And as we do that, what I can do is then start to practice going in between these. Like if I know my A minor is here, for example, I can start to practice every time I get to the A minor in part of the song, maybe I move up here. So. Right, just to, just to try to practice moving, interchanging the different chord pieces from the different areas. It's a little bit of a trick. It's a bit difficult to do the jump sometimes, but that's just something that we can practice putting in there. But before we get there, we can also think, I broke these down into the roots. So we also broke this down because the melody of this song is probably not the most memorable thing. And the melody oftentimes follows along in this particular song with the chords. So in this case, I broke down the chord construction to the, the melody of, to, to the root notes of each of the chords. We looked at this in open position before. So instead of, instead of playing the full chord, we, so we looked at just the melody, right? So that you can play along, and if you play that along with the soundtrack, uh, or the YouTube song, then it'll sound, you know, you, it might be easier to hear the rhythm uh, within there cause since you're missing like the third, which is kind of like the, the, the meat of it. And then you can also practice your strumming. And so we played that through and here's the words. I heard there was a secret chord, so I, so it's going to be, I heard there was a secret chord. And then over here, uh, that David played in it pleased the Lord, right? Or you could play one beat all the way across, right? I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. Just to get your rhythm down. And then we continued on with that here. And so you can kind of think about it by looking at the root notes and then converting that into the chords. Now this makes more sense possibly when we're when we're looking now at the at the position on basically fret five, because because now we might not know the chords as well up here as we do in open position. So it might be a good starting point for us to first say, let me map out each of the notes here, and then I can use those notes to build chords on top of. And so as you're playing the song possibly in a YouTube or video or something, you can play the notes in open position and see if you can get a rhythm within there and alternate back and forth between the open chords possibly and some of the notes that you can mirror up up here and do something along with the soundtrack that's not exactly the same but is following along with the same general progression so so here for example uh, what we have here is our tab but we're gonna have the low string on top because I think that's easiest to see it by the way I'm not left-handed either I'm putting the left side of the guitar over here because everything is going the same way from left to right. You're looking at the guitar and all the tab as though you're looking over the top of the guitar, which I think is the view that is just most easy for people to look at. So that's going to be the general idea. So the, so we're going from the tab left to right. This, this represents every note that we're going to be playing and then the seven represents the fret so this is going to be the d string so here's the d string and the seventh fret so there's the seventh fret it's going to be green you can also think about it 
by the color order, green, orange, and then blue. So we're on this A, seventh fret, D string is going to be the green, and then we're gonna move to this uh, fifth fret of the G string. Here's the G string, fifth fret, boom, 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 do that, and then we're gonna go back up to the seventh fret of the D string. So you can also think about it up here in terms of colors, seventh fret is the green, and then we move to the orange, and then we move to the blue. So it's gonna be something like this. We've got the green, so, uh, I heard there was a secret chord, something like that, right? And notice that once we get that down, we can also see that we have, uh, we have an A that is up here as well. So we could have it up here. So right, I heard there was a secret chord, something like that. So, so we can play it in different, basically, octaves, which can be useful, again, when you're playing on with the song, because oftentimes you're going to play it in a higher register, possibly, if you're playing along with the song. But I kind of like the lower registers up here when you're just kind of, when you're just kind of noodling around. I, I see that a lot of people kind of ignore them because they're used to playing in a band, and so they're used to playing the, the high register strings so that they're not overriding the bass and whatnot. But... If it's just you on the guitar, you can be switching over here to doing to doing something over here, right? In the in the bass line, if if you're kind of doing your own thing on it. So then we're gonna continue on over here. This one, the second bit, I I mapped out on the top string, so uh, so it's like so that David played and it pleased the Lord, right? And so you can also play that one down here, the same that we did here down on this string because this is an A, this is an A. We have the C here and we have the C here. So we're trying to kind of map these things out and basically be able to mirror them from a note standpoint, which is closer to how we learned this because we learned this shape more with the shape. If you've been following along, if not, that's okay as well. But you probably know this shape more as a shape rather than, rather than as chord shapes up here because many people do. So we might learn basically the notes where the notes are in this shape. Here's our A, which is the sixth of the, of the major scale, and then here's our Cs. And so we can play that, play it in those two positions. If I was to move to the next position, we can say, okay, next position. I'm gonna try to put these two on at the same time. So now we're here, I'm playing it on that top string again. So it's gonna be, uh, uh, so we have then, then, duh, 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 duh. so we left off on this A, so I'm going to say, but, and then we're going to this, uh, orange, which is the F, and that's going to be right here, you don't really, and then we're going to this G, the G is right here, care for music, and then I'm going to reach to the low C, do you. And so then we have the the do, 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 the fifth up here, back to the to the G as we roll into the next bit. If I was to play that uh, in open position, we have then the A. It was like, but it was this A minor. But you don't really. That's our F. Care for music, and then uh, do you? And that's going to be back to our C. So we're kind of mirroring that over here. And again, you could mirror it down here, starting with this low A. You can also do a similar progression starting uh, with, with uh, this A down below. So let's go to the next one and we're gonna say, all right. So then see if I can get two of these on the screen. So now we're gonna say, well, so we're back on the C up here, or let's go, we're back on the G, well, it goes like this, and then the F, the fourth, the fifth, and there's our G down here. And so again, if I was to play that in open position, we're, we'd be saying here that we're on this G, we ended up, well, it goes like this to the F fourth, 
to the G fifth, or the G up here if you want to play it that way, or the G like this if you want to play it that way. And we're basically mirroring that. And so then we'll go to the next one and say do 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 uh, and then it's gonna say we're on this green, so that's the G, the and then up to this A minor fall the and then to this F right here. Major lift. So if I was to play that over here, we'd say, okay, this is going to be this uh, G, the minor fall, the major lift. Right, and then we're gonna go, okay. So if we start on this A, we have the halle, and we go to this A, hallelujah, hallelujah. That A is kind of low, we can also use this A down here if we want. So hallelujah, hallelujah. And then we have the next bit. Obviously, if I was to play that uh, in open position, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And then the next bit is going to be if we start on this A again, hallelujah, back to that. Halle, and then it's switching to the C, which I have one here and I have one down here. Hallelujah, hoo, hoo. that's gonna go to this G, right? And then yeah, and that's what brings me back to the to the root, which is the C, which we also have down here if you want to play it in a higher uh, octave. So then it's gonna repeat after that. We can continue with the with the verses. This one I played the full thing up on the top instead of like starting with where we played it kind of down here from this A. So now, well, it says, uh, well, uh, your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof, right? Or something like that. And then we would repeat the process. And we can also play that down here with this A to this C, right? You, uh, your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof, something like that. Now, once we have the general idea of these notes down, then you might convert those notes into the chords, which we did over here. So now you can map out each of these notes and map out the chord related to it. So, so the the nice thing about these worksheets is then I can I can see everything here as it relates to the key of C, and I can see the notes that we're playing in the key of C. But then as we're switching the notes, I want to see I want to see these the one three five in the chord that we're in, and that's why these chords over here worksheets are nice on this side because they're going to give us. They're going to give us this this in each position, position open position and position one, and give us the one three five in each chord. So this is of course the next chord is uh, 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 an A minor. So now I have the one three five, the green, yellow, and red in A minor. Okay, so so we might then think, okay, how can I kind of play with this and do something different with the song? So I might then say, okay, let me let me actually go to my to the chords, and let's think if we were going to play through the song uh, this way and think about how we can use some of those different features, right? So the first bit was so I can say, okay, there's the C. Maybe every maybe in that intro, I'm going to try to basically move up to here's a C up top and see if I can mirror something up top. So I could say to the A, to C, to A, right, just to play something in between, or here's a C. So I can jump up here. So I could say here's a C.
could do the same thing in between each one and see if I could put a little noodle up here in my in my position. So as long as I start, I'm going to start and stop on the note on the root of the chord that I'm in. So if I, if this is the key of C, I might. Here's my A. And then if I go to the second bit of the song, so now I'm on the verse, but I, I, I heard, well, this is the same bit. I heard there was a secret chord, right? I heard there was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord. We could do something and noodle around uh, with that. And then we can also mirror the actual chord construction in two areas. So I might say, I'm going to go from a C in this position and try to play the A here. My A chord construction looks like this. So I'm going to say, OK, here's my A. I can play it like this, my A minor. Easiest way to play it for me is like this, which is this, da, da, da. And so, I, so I'm going to try to jump mainly playing it that way and see if I can kind of shuffle that in as I'm, as I'm doing my normal strumming. So I can kind of like be like, okay. I heard there was a secret chord. David, David played and it pleased the Lord. So it's a little difficult to get it down, but once you get the jump, then you can kind of practice throwing that in, right? So I heard there was a secret chord. David played and it pleased the Lord. I can also try to kind of extend this A to move it up to here, right? So I heard there was a secret chord. David played and it pleased the Lord. I heard there was a secret chord. trying to add a little filler you know in between the two the, is another kind of way you can play with it right and so we then say okay now I have my my F to the G so here's my but you don't really care for music do you back to the C so we have that bit so so the F up here we saw the F is like this this C shape so maybe I look at that F over here and say okay what can I do uh, with the F? Do, 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 There's, where's the F? It's right there. So I can see, all right, where, where's my shape on that? Let's focus on that one. Here's an F. That's my C shape. It's moved up to this F where I can mute that. Or I can play it, I can play it like just the top three, like this. I can play it, I can reach down and play it this way. Or I can play it this way and then reach my pinky down. Easiest way though to just reach it is with your, your normal C shape. And then it's not picking up the fifth and you have to mute these two strings if you don't want that G ringing out. But even if the G rings out, at least it's in the key. So it's not a big deal. That would be bringing in the ninth of that particular chord. So we could say, all right, let's just try to jump over to that F and see if I can roll that into what I'm doing here. So we'll say, all right. So we have, uh, you don't really care for music, do you? So I could bring that F up here. You don't really care for music, do you? You don't really care for music, do you? Or again, I can try to play that F. You don't really care another flavor in it you don't really this is a form of the f you don't really there's that d shaped f care for music do you you don't you don't really care for music do you i also have
have the C, so the C shape, if I was to move uh, the C shape up, would look like, would look like a C uh, in uh, this position, do, 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 would be that you can play it an A shape this way, or, so that would be do, 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 the C grabbing down this way, or I can play it up this way, do, 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 and I can play it just this way, that would be like part of the A shape, but leaning forward, so it's kind of part of this, I would call it a G-shaped C major. So I can play with that over here. And so I can say, okay, do, 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 do. let's say we have the F down here. We're going to say, but, but you don't really care for music. And now I'm in this G in this shape. So my C is right there. I could just play those three or grab this one. That's my bar chord. I can go from this F, you don't really care for music, and then lean it forward this way, do ya, grabbing it, I can say, you don't really care for music, and now I'm grabbing this top part of the F, which I can play this way, some people bar it off, so that they can play it like this, or even just these two. Do ya. So then we have, uh, and then we have the next bit, which it, it goes like this. So, do, 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 do. so it usually goes, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. So we can kind of play with that. So obviously, if I if I left off over here, I could stay over here with my C. Uh, it goes like this, the fourth. There's my F the fifth and there's my G back here in this middle part or the fifth right or if I'm starting over here here's my C goes like this and now I'm gonna take this C shape and I'm gonna move it up to my F it goes like this the fourth and then the G shape we haven't looked at uh, we in detail over here the G shape is gives a little bit more of a of a not as full of a sound in this position because the root is like right in this middle string so that's my D shape it's right there it looks like this or you can play it like this this D shape up top and then I can of course lean back to this G shape which is what we've been out or it's an it's an E shape G major so we could say all right let's do something like da, 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 da. what was I what was what were we doing here uh, it goes like this. You don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this. So now we're on, uh, let's put a little, can I put a little green dot in the place we're on here? I'm going to say that's where we are. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, there it goes. All right, so we're going to say, so, so we're on. Uh, so there's our C. Well, well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. And so I was going to say, well, it goes like this, the fourth. So that brings us up to that F right here. And then my G is right there, the fifth. So it goes like this, the fourth. And we can also take the G right here, the fifth. And then to the minor chord. So we saw the minor chord can be played like this. There's our full full E, e minor shaped A minor chord. Or I can play it like this. Minor fall, the major lift. So there's my F, I can play it like this. I can play it like this. Play it like this. The major lift, the baffle king. So there's my G, baffle king composing. And here's my E. So the E, I can play, there's my, it's an E shape, looks like that. I like to play it this way. And I really like that move because it gives it a lot of tension back to the A minor. So let's try this, the, the minor fourth and the 
Uh, major lift, the baffle king. Here's my G baffle king composing. So here's my, this would be a minor, an E minor in the key. Composing, but I'm gonna switch it from here. Adding this, there's the major. And then I like putting this finger down so this string doesn't just ring out as a G. And then I'm, I'll put that finger down here. Gives me a lot of tension. Composing, holly. And then take these fingers back up and put it right here for my A minor. Hallelujah. And that's what gives you that kind of more of a funky kind of sound. It kind of has a bluesy, more tensiony thing going on. So, so minor for the major lift. The baffle king come posing So we can kind of play with that. And then when we're into the chorus here, so we have. So it would go hallelujah, hallelujah. So if we were going to play with that, we have a lot of room in between those notes. So I could say hallelujah, and then hallelujah. There's my F. I can play that up here. Here's another F right there. Here's another F. So I can just say, I could be like hallelujah. Gonna mirror that A here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I could play this up. Here's another way to play the C. Another way to play the C. There's my high G. Yeah. C. So now I can start to kind of mirror what I'm playing across the, the guitar, right? So, so oftentimes when I play this chorus, it's a, it, because it has a long stretch, you can kind of put filler in it, right? So, halle, hallelujah, F, 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 hallelujah. So here's my A that's in this position. F that's in this position looks like a C shape. Here's my G like this. Here's another way to play the G. Here's another way to play the G. Whoops, I was not the C. So we got Hallelujah. That's kind of a close. Let's play this with C, and then I'm just gonna play G, F, C, just to kind of close it out, right? So, so we got ha, hallelujah, F, 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 hallelujah, A minor. I'm gonna hammer on A minor. This is a seven. C and I, and I can close it out with a C G G G G E or F C right it's just to put a little here's my close All right just to repeat it right so one more time hallelujah hallelujah F F F hallelujah 
Uh, that was wrong. Let me do it again. <laughs> hallelujah, F, 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 hallelujah, A minor, A minor. Something like that. So those are just some ideas to kind of noodle around in the different positions.